okay now as i said the user wants the data warehouse which is a single you know database platform from which all the data is from different different platforms like one data from oracle few data from sql server few data from excel flat files and few data from postgresql you know, they cannot directly interact with each other, other because their platforms are different their data types their storage type would be different but through etl tool we will user wants to get all those data and store in a single database platform whenever he queries from that database he will get the entire result from all his applications through that database okay that's what the data warehouse is and user wants summary data has a real value to organizations you know based on that he can take the decision historical data holds the key to understanding the data over time so through historical data user wants to make a predictive analytics that means you know based on the your past transactions based on your past database performance or business performance you know user can predict that in 5 years down the line what would be my growth or what would be my downfall because that is only possible based on your historical data okay what if capability are required that's what i say like you know if you have a data previous data and based on those previous database trends data trends user can predict and what would be my situation i being a businessman i can say like what would be my situation if i i just invest this much of amount in my business this is the what if analysis if i if the vat amount would be increased or decreased what would be my loss or profit okay if i you know hire few more people to the organizations what would be my gain so that's all decision making is required by the users so looking into all his requirement the business intelligence come into picture is data warehouse is the ultimate solution yes i can improve my business using data warehouse yes then how so as i shown the you know i i told the example like you know you have different clients one is sap one is your attendance system one is your insurance system one is your library and there is another data source the legacy or old databases so from all those you know data these are the, all the clients and these are all the databases those are from the different different database platforms so user want a single database through which you know all the data will be fetched and stored here and that would be reflected into various client through a dummy terminals so msba main focus is to build a data warehouse and analytics and through for analytics what are the data model would be needed will be done through ssas okay this is what i told about the data warehouse it usually contains historical data derived from transaction database but it can include data from other sources like various different different platforms it separates analysis workload from transaction and it you know workload and enable an organization to consolidate data from several sources this is exactly what i told in the few slides that so this is the elaboration of data warehouse now this is how you know the logical conceptual process flow is you have a different data sources consolidation happen here in the single database and data warehouse database you know format would be or oltp olap database whereas these are all your oltp databases right transaction databases and this is a analytical or dimensional database i'm going a little bit faster because i know that because you have a uh, basic knowledge yeah, wherever you feel i am going faster you can just stop me huh? so yeah. this is what the olap is olap come into picture when data warehouse is introduced okay olap provides the better performance for accessing multi dimensional data what is multi dimensional data i'll go more deeper with the diagrams in the next slides 
the most important mechanism in OLTP which allows to archive such performance is used for the aggregations. So basically, you know, for building KPIs, okay, KPIs like, you know, I will show month-wise sales, year-wise uh, profit, customer-wise sales, you know, uh, uh, daily basis attendance, number of users entered to the company. So these are all the KPIs, the charts. So in the KPIs we would use aggregation that is some count minimum maximum and all. What is, what, is, what is KPI? KPI is key performance indicator. Uh, every object you know you know analytics dashboard, a bar chart, a pie chart, a line chart, a report, a filter, a calendar, these are all called as KPI. Okay. Key performance indicator on which you will take the decision. The indicators. <laughs> so, OLAP database helps to use aggregation very easily without, you know, doing very difficult calculations. Okay. So. Let's see the difference between OLTP and OLAP. OLTP is normally a SQL database. Transition processing, this is analytical processing. Logically, it looks like this. You have different dimensions. Okay. One dimension is your date. Another is customer. Another is uh, your country. Another is uh, your students. Another is your company. So, uh, based on the different, different dimensions, you would get uh, measures, measures like country-wise population, you know, student-wise marks, okay, and uh, you know monthly month-wise sales. So sales, mark, population, these are all the measures, okay, which leads aggregations. Some of some of uh, population, you know, count of students. So these are all BA mechanisms. If you are getting confused, then don't be confused because in the succeeding slides or in the real time session we are all going to cover this okay slowly slowly you'll be uh, getting all this knowledge so the differences are here as day by day operations and inventories banking manufacturing payrolls so these are all done in the OLTP here in data analytic analysis and decision making done in OLAP. The tables are normalized and these tables are denormalized. This is exactly what I said here. Here we have you know storage objects are tables. Here we have storage object and have dimension and facts. See, this is my no normalized tables and this is my denormalized table. The same thing. Okay. Here I have same table is broken into three. Like category. Inside a category there are a lot of products. Then I have a group. Inside the group I have a lot of categories. Inside a category I have a lot of products. Okay. But if you just group them, if you just join these three tables with left join, then it would form a single schema which is a denormalized table, right? This is clear, right? Yeah. yeah. So in data warehouse, you would get most of the tables would be joined together to form a single table. So now tell me if you use a MSBI uh, SSRS, as you said, like you have done some BI practices earlier, then which table you would prefer? Uh, to to create your uh, create a chart does this three table you prefer or a single table create a chart yeah uh, yeah maybe single table definitely because if you want to see uh, um, if you want to show group wise uh, products product counts then you need to join these three tables then you need to write some queries to join all these things but if it is 
in a single table you can simply take the group as a dimension and count of product id as your measure okay to form a chart bar chart so this is this should be definitely easier for creating analytics without joining without writing some coding now as i said which is olap which is single di you know dimensional table or a kind of joining of multiple tables form a single table then olap is you know are of two types rolap and molap okay rolap is basically dimension and facts dimensions are usually used in a chart normally if you say creating a chart dimensions are those fields which will be used in the x axis and facts are the fields those are normally used for y axis of a chart okay in x axis means say product name then quantity so you will draw a chart by product 1 2 3 then quantity 10 to 20 30 40 50 and so on then product wise quantity based on this quantity your chart will be drawn right so facts are those fields those are used for mathematical calculations and dimensions are those fields those are used normally for what captions or x axis data for creating a normal chart a bar chart or a line chart you need at least two two fields one is to be shown in the x axis normally they are string type of data one is to show in the y axis normally they are you know numeric so fact fields are fact table contains the numeric data those needs to be calculated based on the mathematical function make sense yes yes and molap is basically a output of your ssas by the joining of this multiple tables you form on an object that is called cube okay cube is a logical concept cube definition is it's an object which is used for multi dimensional analytics okay if you join five tables to form a single table then you will store that table to object so that analytics tool will use that cube for visual analytics for representation then they would not do any further joinings and all because from the cube you will get the table details the output okay so molap the cube is basically again are of two type the different type of schemas that is one is star schema these are all the snowflake schema so if you go for attending a, you know data warehouse question every slide what i'm talking right now in every slide you would get at least two questions okay what is oltp what is olap what is master table and what is transaction table what is normalization what is denormalization okay what are dimension what is fact what is molap and rolap what is a cube what is what are the schema what is a star schema and what is snowflake schema okay then so these are all the interview highly asked interview questions okay so this this thing did you know earlier or if you you finding it helpful I have the idea of the question. Okay. So, yeah. Schemas? Let's go ahead. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. I know what is star and what is okay. Okay. So in in the star schema, the dimension tables are. Yeah. Basically, but, in the uh, star schema, uh, you would get in the center, you would get one uh, fact table, which contains the measures, basically measure fields, and rest of all the fields would get the dimensions, and through the dimension table, you would get the relationship. to the fact table okay all your dimension table would be related to a single fact table which is called as a star schema star schemas are uh, more structural uh, yeah tell me amit uh, when i look at the first point of the star schema i think in the star schema the dimension tables are not normalized uh, right yeah definitely because here all these are the you know this is yeah. okay. 
This is a normalized yeah, model. Like, this is a normalized model, but you know. That, that. Yeah, yeah, tell me. It, no, they will be denormalized. No, I was confused. I'm looking at the point. No, no, no. When you when you build a complete schema, then that schema is a denormalized view. Okay, but before in, before you do a schema, how the tables are connected? Normalized tables would be connected to each other to form a denormalized schema. Okay, whose output you will get a single result. So it is a kind of cube. It's a you know part of your cube which forms a star schema or a snowflake schema. A tables may be joined in different way. Okay, where you will have a lot of tables and you will have a single uh, you know fact table which would have only relations to the dimension tables. So basically, these tables are part of your data warehouse tables. In these tables, you would have only relationship. Say this is a product table. You'd have product ID, which would be relation with this. This is country table, which have country relation ID here. This is a customer table, which will have customer ID here. So all these dimensions tables would be related to here with this foreign keys. Apart from that, foreign keys, you would have some more major fields like. Sales, quantity, profit, revenue, margins, etc., etc. Okay, so that you would get country-wise revenue, product-wise uh, sales, okay, customer-wise margin, so and so. Okay, am I make sense? No, still still confusing. So, okay, so far okay. what I know is you know, what a start schema is. Uh, people have a fact table in the center of the. Center and and, uh, and all the dimension tables will be connected to the fact table. True. And the dimension tables are not are not uh, normalized. They are de denormalized. Definitely, they are de denormalized. I mean, here it is. Uh, the, 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 then here it shows normalized model. So the snowflake is uh, denormalized. So I got confused. No, no. Usually, no. Snow, in snowflake, in it's it's about? both are denormalized. Yeah, actually, it's a typing mistake. Dimension. Both are denormalized schema because you know here these facts are also. Uh, you know, joining a multiple dimensions no, are also no snowflake. No snowflake. They they were normalized because dimension tables are marked. They they will be divided into much more smaller tables, right? So mm -hmm. that's why that's why they they occupy less storage space because they are normalized. Yeah, that's fine, but they are even even not a transaction table because snowflake table schema is usually when a dimension table would have another lookup table that we call as a snowflake schema. But if you this remove the lookup tables then ultimately you won't get a star schema okay here this would be a fact this is a dimension table this is a dimension table these are all the dimension table however these two are a fact you know lookup tables i mean this is a <laughs> employee table where designation this is a designation table which designation id is here okay so when you have nested uh, tables from dimensions then it is called as a snowflake schema. Okay. okay. So MSBA is a package basically used for implementing data warehouses which use for better decision supports which contains MSBA contains the three different softwares as I said like you know, you have uh, analytic services, you have notification services, you have reporting services, you have database engine, which is a uh, part of your database. Then this is ETL basically, um, transformation services. Okay. So these are the component of your MSPA. So what are the different roles you would perform when you take the training and the roles may be your MSBA administrator which will be responsible for hosting your reports, the architect who will be, you know create your data warehouse and you know configure your packages and define the scope of the tables. Then ETL developer who will only you know create the ETL packages to transfer the data from source system to destination system. Cube developer which will be working with uh, OLAP 
I mean MS SSA is he is responsible to create the data models based on the different tables of the data warehouse he will join the tables and form a schema that's what we call as a cubes and report developer will fetch those cubes and create the visual objects to represent the data okay three components SSIS SSAS and SSIS now why you are choosing MSBA there are few representations the products features are both of these three features are same if you compare MSBA with Oracle 10G and IBM DB2 but the cost a little bit high in case of other products now for manageability everything is there in the SQL Server itself like we have a SQL Server management studio for managing a SQL Server database however for Oracle it needs another editors like you know Oracle SQL developer or Toad for managing data like for IBM also you need additional components which needs a separate cost business intelligence the same package includes SSA, IS, SSA, SSR, S. but for Oracle it needs you know, different packages like OBI, IE, Oracle uh, business intelligence or for uh, you know, IBM you may have Cognos and all right for building IB, you know, uh, IBM uh, data warehouse we have Natiza which is IBM products and for high availability that means in SQL Server also you can define cl cluster database for high availability I mean if one database will go down another will take a backup but here in SQL Server every, you know in Oracle and DB2 you, for every additional components it is chargeable so that's why SQL Server is more demanded highly demanded based on its low cost and more usability okay <laughs> The second demanding is Oracle. So this is what uh, the, the product comparison. Now, if you talk about the database warehouse architecture, first of all, you will be provided operational data sources, various data sources. Just see, this is flat file database. These are some different transaction system. This is uh, say just web services. This is some others. Now middleware for population tool is this is my ETL which is called middleware so which will fetch the data from different data sources and will create a single composed database called data warehouse okay so from this data warehouse to build a KPIs in visual analytics you need to create a data models that's what we call as a cubes and then from this we are doing analytics and the analytics may be different type of charts, different type of reports, different uh, you know OLAPs and data mining and all okay data mining is just a querying interface where the user will do ad hoc queries to form a you know any ad hoc reports that's what we call as a data mining there will not be any graphical interfaces user will be provided a query builder where they will query the data in different angles in practical scenario the data warehouse is something like this you have a different uh, databases say SQL Server, Oracle, IBM and CSV and all and you have a staging DB which is optional you can directly fetch the data to data warehouse or we can also create a staging DB so staging DBs are normally a transaction database and data warehouse are normally a dimensional database so this is my data warehouse the same format you have in SQL Server, Oracle and DB uh, uh, databases they would be in transaction database they would be in normalized way so you would get the same database transaction database in normalized data format to this staging DB the same tables table 1, table 2, table 3 will come to here with the same format, same trans, you know, uh, uh, normalized way. So the purpose of making the staging DB is to maintain a backup of your data warehouse. And before you do 
or data warehouse you need to perform some sort of transactions you know some sort of transformations so here we have data with x value you can add, add some you know uh, formulas and then we get x1 here so some filter data some pre-transformation data are stored here in the staging and transformed data are stored in data warehouse that's done through SSIS then queues which is a data model where the data are stored in different structures and stored in a so in a denormalized view that's what we done through SSAS okay and then so data warehouse which is called as a roll up and here it is called molap and finally we do reportings the dashboarding okay that can be mobile app that can be web app that can be single kpis that's done through cubes or which is cube is optional as i said ssa is optional if you have directly data visualize you can directly fetch the data to re reporting for building reporting else you can create a cube and store it for further access so there's a two dimensions two different way to create reporting so that's done through ssrs this is integration service so most of your activities is done through integration services the percentage you are seeing here that will be covered in the session accordingly analytic services and reporting services finally this is the output of your msbi so thank you in case of any questions if you have please uh, address before i conclude the session today So, for you just for today, right? So, from tomorrow I'm going to get another client, as you said. Yeah, I mean, uh, you need to confirm to RVH Tech to continue with the you know real time session. Another guy was also supposed to join. I will also bring him on board. Then we'll start from the creation of first the the sequence we uh, you know came from the presentation. You need to create a database. We need to create a OLTP and OLAP then we do a ETL for data warehousing then we'll do a data modeling in SSAS then we'll do representation through SSRS so the same sequence the practicals will be covered okay so thanks for spending some time here then uh, hopefully we'll meet in the live session yeah, if you can confirm uh, with to uh, rvs check then uh, looking forward to see you in the live session thank you yeah, thanks, oh, bye bye